for the final week of the regular season. Head coaches Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh face off for the 31st time. It's the Steelers and the Ravens headed your way on EA Sports. They love their crab cakes and they love their football. That's what Maryland does. And we are at M&T Bank Stadium down near the Inner Harbor of Baltimore. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And CD, you look at our featured team here. They know coming in, they've got to be at their best because they're facing one of the better overall defenses in the NFL. And this is not one of the better offenses around in terms of running the football. So they understand that they're going to be put to the test a bit. The big plays in the run game, they haven't been there of late. So maybe that means we'll see them shake things up a little bit. Some RPOs, some touch passes, some draw plays, anything to try and gain a little bit of momentum. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. No run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. The Steelers set to go on offense, and it is the big man, Big Ben, number seven, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to lead them. Coming off of a loss that last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up. There he goes, right side. And to the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Well, we know that he can beat you in a number of ways. He can catch it short, he can take it long, or he can do what we just saw right there, catch it, and then run with the football. And that should serve as a big warning to this defense. They know now that they have to stick close to these receivers because they have the ability to break games wide open after the catch. And that one wound up in the end zone. And you can see the distance traveled there after the catch on the next-gen stats. Extra point put through by Boswell. And it's now a 7-0 game. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. And he's had a great season so far throwing the football. Very likely to go over 4,000 yards with a good performance here. And even in an age of passing first, that is no small accomplishment. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 24. Throwing to start the drive. Jackson. Making the catch. This is the tight end out of it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A big connection on that one. 33 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now a 
first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll be pulled down as a penalty flag will rain in as well. And that would appear to be a face mask. That's a big letdown defensively. They had him stop behind the line, but the face mask going to bail the offense out. And the hand does not have to be up there for too long. Just a little bit of a grab is going to be enough to get the call and the 15 yards against them. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. T.J. Watt coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Lamar Jackson, for all the talents of escaping pressure that he possesses, he was helpless to do much of anything there. He had no chance. Open man is Duvernay. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. And a nice milestone reached on that last throw is here late in the season. He goes over 4,000 yards passing. And he's really thrown the ball well all season long. Had some big games along the way. He's inspired his receiving core to go out and make plays for him in each and every ball game. Cameron Hayward getting upfield to make the stop. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Jackson from the shotgun. Dancing to his left. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. Jackson. And he fires one, but incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. And he'll try and throw here on the fake. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. So a fake field goal run in for the touchdown. That can be a huge momentum swing. And that's got to drive a defensive coach and a special teams coach crazy. Someone else running it in on a fake field goal when you're supposed to be alert for it. Terrific play by the offense. Not so much by the defense. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And that will tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession as we grind toward the end of the season here. And they haven't had the season that they had hoped. So let me ask you to play GM. Where might they look to make some changes? I think when you look into the upcoming draft, think hard about them drafting multiple offensive linemen. They've got to get stouter up front. And as a GM always tells me, Charles, this is a big boy league. And big people always end up winning games for you. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. So, Charles, we have reached the end here of a long season, Week 18, which we don't say very often, although this is not the first Week 18 that the NFL has ever seen. Not at all, and Brandon, some of the people might be a little bit too young to remember, but back in 1993, the league experimented with giving teams two open weeks for the year, and we also saw Week 18 when the league was on pause for a few weeks in 2001 following the attacks on September 11th. On third down, Roethlisberger. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he will have the Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back and He's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him. And I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coach. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Two first quarter touchdown passes now for Ben Roethlisberger. And the Steelers have taken the lead. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to 7. That time, 75 yard drive, five plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. 
And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now it's Jackson. Steps away to his left. That ball caught. It's Mike Andrews, the tight end. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. It's a big play there for Baltimore. When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a give, this is Murray. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. So Charles, you look at this offense, and really on paper at least, a great situation for them upcoming. They're unbeaten on the year, an open week coming up after this. So I guess my question, any worry that maybe this is coming at the wrong time? Oh, definitely I would be worried about this game, maybe more than any other on this schedule, because I know my guys are looking ahead to that open week. I've got to keep them focused on the task ahead. Make sure they take care of business in this one. Otherwise, you're talking about a double trap. The trap of losing the game and then having the open week and having to stew about it. Now Jackson. And he's got it. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. Tucker with the extra point, and we are tied here in the second quarter. So that drives six plays, 75 yards, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like you to... And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Calais Campbell, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. But that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. So they'll wind up losing five yards on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it. And, it won't... and he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line. It's a sack. Justin Houston in there to drop it for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall, and they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. Shoves him aside. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the special teams penalty costs some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Play action. Now Jackson, flush to his right. This is caught. It's Brown. And he's finally taken down, but not before he reaches the 14. 
It's a big play there for Baltimore. Already over 1,000 yards receiving this season. That catch is just going to add to his total. He's certainly not resting on his laurels. He's trying to continue to gain as many yards as possible and continue this big season. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. On second down, it's Murray. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Flushed out right. And a big loss here as he's taken down. A minute 55 left to go in the first half of play. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. This will be spotted at the 37, so it's a 47-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it, able to retain possession. That was big for them. Ten on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And they'll indeed stop them on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? It'll be a gain of five, and the punt team will now come out on fourth down. The Steelers send out their punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin our tour up at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. And it's the Bengals who have the lead in the second quarter. Joe Mixon, a couple of touchdown runs. Next, we'll head over to check on the Giants at home at MetLife Stadium. And they have the lead over the visiting Washington football team at halftime. Daniel Jones, three first half touchdown passes. Finally, let's get to Philadelphia. Check on the Eagles at home at Lincoln Financial Field. In that game, all square, they take on the visiting Cowboys. Time now for a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Steelers. And I can imagine the halftime discussions are about how can we improve the running game? They have not had success so far, and it's reflected on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, you get a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And whatever they've done, it's worked, as they have the lead through two quarters of play. 
Both teams going back to their game plans, making their final halftime adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we go back up to Baltimore and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Oh, the return is Duvernay. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, it didn't get it moving the way that they would run. They had success going in. And I think these first couple of drives, they're going to get the running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he almost made it, but just short. Finally out of bounds, right down around the goal line. Oh, they hate that. Wipes out the big play. And I know this is the NFL, so they would probably fine you for this type of a penalty. But when I was in college, you used to have to do up-downs for the number of yards that you cost a team in a big play. To throw is Jackson. Eluding the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Play action. It's Jackson. Forced out to his left. And now he'll let this one go deep. Back over the middle. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Throwing back across his body. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. And the Steelers are going to take over at their own 41. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind. And we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. <laughs> So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off here by Jimmy Smith. And the Ravens are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Well, these two teams, you may recall, they didn't play each other till late in the year. Their first meeting was not too long ago, back in week 13. And it was the Ravens getting the road victory in that one. So now they'll look to finish off the season sweep here in Baltimore. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Five yards, now it's third and five. From the gun, Jackson flush to his right. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead. This is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 58 yards now on the ground at just seven carries. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Flushed out right. 
And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. To throw again on second down. Jackson escaping the pressure right. That is caught at the seven. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. Running their plays over and over during the week can often get robotic for an offense. But on game day, they can often flow smoothly, as that one just did. They'll try to run it in with Murray. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Latavius Murray with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. Tucker now to add the point after. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So this drive spans seven plays. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play caller because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Now a dump off here complete. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And they're going to face a third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. These two teams met in Baltimore. You might remember earlier in the year with the Ravens winning that game. So a win here in Baltimore would give them the season sweep. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Well, the pressure, the hits, the sacks have been coming at him all game long. I'm frankly surprised that they haven't found a solution yet to create more time for him to throw it or maybe change what they do. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Calais Campbell picks up his second sack of the afternoon. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. To the sideline, and he's got it. They say the feet are down. Yes, the line judge says they're in. That'll be a first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try to get the ball back again. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Roethlisberger will throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Put out the feed. In there to record another sack. And that is now six on the afternoon for this defensive unit. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches, I always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. And they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed.
And this pass broke it up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And I think we'll probably see them go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores, they have to try and make something good happen. Looking deep here for Ebron. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't get in. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. First down, Murray. And he's got this down to the 35. 75 yards on the ground for him now. Nine carries. Carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. They're going to run it with Murray. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. Latavius Murray unable to lower those shoulders and get the first. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. Roethlisberger. Pass complete to Ebron. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Roethlisberger got to get his guys to the line as quick as he can. Pass complete to Harris. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Here we go. It's Roethlisberger on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. On first down, Murray. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll hit the sideline and talk over what to do now. Another run for Murray on second down. They'll get it to the 23 yard line. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Carries piling up. It's Murray again. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there. And it helps him move the sticks. A handoff. It's Murray. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. Doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. 
Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. So the final seconds take away in this Baltimore victory. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They didn't give up the points in the first quarter. But second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you said baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time, and the hitters get to see him. And then they come out after that, and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from that point on. What a great, convincing performance. So for Baltimore, they finish off a perfect regular season, 17-0. And now they'll have the week off as they get set to go after a Super Bowl title. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, this loss will mean they finish the season on the wrong side of 500 at 8-9. And, and they can take solace in the fact that this team never quit all the way to the end.